Joined now by Sung Yu Lee, a Korean studies professor at Tufts University. Thanks for joining us. A lot of people thought that there would be another missile test to mark Kim Jong il's death. What are your thoughts on that? It's always possible. We know North Korea does tend to provoke on a major holiday both North Korea's as well as Chinese Lunar New Year or American Independence Day, Memorial Day, and so on. And this is a momentous occasion. This year, 2017, has really been a banner year for North Korea in terms of successful, unprecedented, powerful missile tests and the most recent nuclear test, the nation's sixth in early September, which apparently was a hydrogen bomb test. And I think North Korea has even a compelling need to escalate just one notch further up by conducting a missile-tipped nuclear test in outer space. They intimated, more than intimated, they actually threatened to conduct a hydrogen bomb test over the Pacific, the North Korean foreign minister did during his visit to New York in September. What that would ac accomplish is that North Korea would then show credibly to the United States and the world that it can nuke any major city in the United States, and that changes the dynamic, changes the balance of power in the region in North Korea's favor. And then North Korea will say, okay, let's now negotiate. This brings me to the next question, where at the UN this week, the ambassador for the DPRK, Jae Song Nam, you may know what he said, that the nuclear arsenal is just an inevitable self-defense measure, especially against the U.S. That's right. North Korea faces, of course, a more successful, richer, more legitimate, more attractive Korean state across the border. And that means the sheer existence of the South Korean state presents an existential threat to the North Korean regime. When your own people are fleeing to hop over the fence to go over to that other Korean state, you have a problem. So what do you do? You don't grant freedom. You don't introduce economic reforms and opening programs. What you do is increase your military capability to be able to cause problems. And one ultimate goal of the North Korean state is to get the U.S. troops out of South Korea, get the U.S. to downgrade its support for South Korea, and then have its way with South Korea and perhaps even Japan. They're on the cusp of doing that. So this has been a remarkably successful year for the North Korean state, an ominous year for the U.S. and South Korea and Japan. This week, uh, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson proposed talks with the DPRK without preconditions. But then he started backing off of that. What do you think it will it take to get both sides to come to the table? Well, the key question is, what are we talking about? What are the two sides going to talk about? North Korea says, it's been saying for many years now, denuclearization is a fool's dream. It's not going to happen. And in truth, no nuclear weapons possessing state without a change in the regime, the leadership, the system has ever bargained away its nuclear arsenal. We talk about Libya and Iraq and so on, but they, their nuclear weapons programs were in a nascent stage. North Korea crossed, crossed the nuclear threshold more than 10 years ago. They're not going to give it up unless they are presented with a biting, perhaps even an existential threat. So North Korea will say, let's talk about disarmament. Let's talk about peace treaty and the withdrawal of U.S. troops. And the incentive is always there for the United States, the bigger the North Korea threat grows, to settle for an expedient deal. We remember the George W. Bush administration, despite its often repeated hostility for the North Korean regime after North Korea escalated with its first nuclear test, the Bush administration basically gave North Korea whatever it wanted. So we could see a repeat play of that kind of dynamic in the region. We'll just have to wait and see. Do you think the DPRK and China will be watching really closely when President Trump lays out his national security strategy on Monday and reacting? That's right. That's right. And North Korea has been saying for decades, it's really, quote, U.S. hostile policy, U.S. stated threats and its hostile policy toward the DPRK that impels North Korea to grow its nuclear and missile capabilities. So North Korea is very good at deflecting blame. And that message, of course, because North Korea is a small backward state, mm -hmm. resonates all around the world. So North Korea will play that up. It's Trump's threats, his rhetorical bellicosity, threat to totally destroy North Korea that just drives North Korea to do this. And that kind of, in my view, false 
allegation will resonate throughout much of the world. Well, Sung Yoon Lee, we certainly appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us from Tufts University in Boston.